Nintendo is today one of the biggest players in the gaming industry. It is a multinational company with billions of dollars of revenue each year. It has a more than 130 years of history as it was originally founded in 1889 in Kyoto of Japan and its first business was the manufacturing of playing cards for the popular Japanese game called Hanafuda. Throughout its long history there were several key figures that helped shape what Nintendo is today. And this is the topic of this series of documentaries called Nintendo Legends. In our first episode we are going to focus on the life and work of Gunpei Yokoi, the inventor behind Game Boy and other consoles and games, and a man who had an immense influence on what Nintendo is today. In the 1950s and 60s, Nintendo was a manufacturer of Hanafuda cards. However, under the leadership of Hiroshi Yamauchi, they tried to differentiate their business model and that was due to the fact that Hanafuda game was directly associated to those guys. They began by licensing Disney playing cards to the Japanese market, which were very successful and brought huge amounts of revenue to Nintendo. What happened next is a bit strange because they decided to invest those money in a Nintendo taxi service a love hotel and other business ventures that uh, didn't go as planned. Meanwhile, in Kyoto, and specifically at Dosisa University, a young engineer got his diploma. His name was Gunpei Yokoi and the first job he got was at Nintendo. He was hired as an assembly line maintenance engineer at the Nintendo Playing Card Factory. The job was quite boring for the young Yokoi, who spent most of his breaks designing and creating toys for his own amusement. One of those designs was that of a plastic mechanical arm that caught the eye of the current CEO of Nintendo, Hiroshi Yamauchi, when he visited the factory. Yamauchi fell in love with what would later be called as the Ultra Hunt and ordered Nintendo to mass produce it for the upcoming Christmas. The Ultra Hunt toy was released in 1966 and it was a huge success during the holiday period, selling millions of units. The success of his invention established Gunpei Yokoi as a toy designer. In the following years, there were many more toys designed by Yokoi and produced by Nintendo. One of those was the Ultra Machine, a ball throwing toy, the Chiritori, a remote control vacuum cleaner, and remember that was back in the 60s before Roomba or the other brands became popular as they are today, and a barrel puzzle game called 10 Million Barrel, just to name a few of his numerous inventions in the following years. Most of his inventions were extremely successful and sold millions of units in the years that followed. Nintendo had found in the face of Gunpei Yokoi a man who could help the company move away from producing playing cards and assisted in becoming one of the key players in the entertainment industry. By the late 60s and early 70s, Nintendo, that had adapted a new logo, was moving away from playing cards production and was focusing exclusively on toys manufacturing. In 1974, Nintendo was exploring new business opportunities in the gaming industry and especially in the newly formed video games market. In order for them to do that, they had set up three different research and development departments and Gunpei Yokoi was put in charge of one of them. While he was searching for new ideas, Gunpei Yokoi boarded the Shinkansen, the famous bullet train of Japan, for a business trip. The bullet train because of its high speed but also high cost, was mainly used as a means of transportation of salary men and business people to commute from and to their jobs. It was those people that Gunpei watched while he was traveling. Some of them were reading a book, others a magazine, while trying to spend their time on the bullet train. However, he noticed that a lot of them were just using their calculators. They were not working, they were just having fun pressing random buttons and doing calculations because they had nothing else to do. It was at that time that Gunpei had an idea. He asked himself if he could use this technology to offer more functions to the consumers than just scientific calculations. What if those things could do more? Gunpei Yokoi knew 
but the scientific calculator was a well-established technology that most of the consumers were familiar with. He also knew that the fierce competition among the two main producers of scientific calculators, Sharp and Casio, had led to a high availability of low-cost liquid crystal displays in the market. It was this idea that helped Ganpei Yokoi to shape his own philosophy behind designing a product. He called it lateral thinking with wither technology and by his own words he said the Nintendo way of adapting technology is not to look for the state of the art but to utilize mature technology that can mass produce cheaply. He put his philosophy to work and created the Game and Watch. The Game and Watch was a series of games built around an LCD screen. It also featured a clock and it was the first time that the D-pad or this cross-shaped directional pad was introduced into a game. The Game and God series was a very successful one with more than 60 different models produced in the years that followed. Some of them had one or multiple screens either in portrait or landscape mode, totaling in more than 40 million units sold. The Game and Watch series was so important to Nintendo that the company released in November of 2020 a new color model to celebrate the 35th birthday of its iconic Super Mario franchise. Ganpei Yokoi, now an established video game designer, was ready to take on some new projects. In one of those, he was the supervisor for the production of the Donkey Kong arcade game that was being developed by a newly hired employee of Nintendo called Shigeru Miyamoto. Yokoi worked alongside with a young game designer, providing valuable feedback and creative ideas and contributing to the final huge success of the Donkey Kong title. Miyamoto considered Yokoi as one of his mentors and the two men collaborated on the next Miyamoto project, which was the iconic Mario Brothers. Yokoi had such faith in the project that he used all his influence to convince Nintendo's top management to accept Miyamoto's ideas. The rest of course is history as this was one of the most successful arcade titles of Nintendo that led to the creation of the Mario franchise. During this period, Ganpei Yokoi was also involved in other projects, both software like the titles Metroid and Kid Icarus and hardware like the robotic operating body, a toy robot accessory for the NES, the Zapper, a toy gun accessory for the same system and the memorable controllers of the Famicom that utilized Gunpei Yokoi's own designs like the D-pad. As the 1980s were coming to a close, Gunpei Yokoi wanted to put his theory of lateral thinking with wither technology to work again. He decided to design a new system based on technologies that he knew very well and had utilized in the past. He took his favorite 8-bit processor, the LCD screen and the D-pad and combined all three in a new console. This new system was codenamed DMG coming from the initials of Dot Matrix game. At that period, there were several people inside Nintendo that did not believe in the success of the project or in Gunpei's Yokoi's vision. There was even an inside joke in the company where they had replaced Dot with Dame, which in Japanese means doomed. Ganpei Yokoi was not discouraged by all this, as he believed in his ideas and trusted his designs and his team. In the spring of 1989, his new console, now named Game Boy, was released in the Japanese market. Game Boy Senyou Soft Super Mario Land The original Game Boy came to the market featuring a 2.6 inch LCD screen, an 8 bit processor. 15 hours of battery life and weighted a bit over 200 grams. It was hugely successful and sold around 300,000 units in the first weeks after its release. That led Nintendo to speed up her plans for releasing the device worldwide. The next market was a North American one and the plan was to release at July of 1989. 
In the meantime, Nintendo of America was pushing for a bundle release that would include also a free game. Nintendo agreed and they decided to include a newly acquired IP with the North American and European release of Game Boy. That game was Tetris. This decision had huge impact on the future sales and success of the Game Boy as it opened up new demographics both for Nintendo but also for the gaming industry in general. The Game Boy reached the North American market as planned on the summer of 1989. They said it wasn't humanly possible, but now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. And for head-to-head -head competition, use the revolutionary video link and blow your opponent away. Game Boy, only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, portable power. The Game Boy, with its amazing design, its features and the huge game library, managed to become the global leader in the handheld gaming market. It literally destroyed competition worldwide, even though in many cases the devices offered by its competitors had better hardware. Two examples of those competitors were the Sega Game Gear and the Atari Lynx. They both featured color screens but only managed to sell a fraction of the units compared to Game Boy. The Game Boy family remained in the market for more than 20 years and featured numerous revisions and new models. The Game Boy Color was released in 1998 and it was the first color display Game Boy ever. In 2001, the Game Boy Advance came out, which was 32-bit and the most powerful of the series. Two years later, Game Boy Advance SP hit the shelves, which was a revision of the previous Game Boy Advance that featured initially a front-lit screen and later on a back-lit one. The final member of the Game Boy family was released in 2005 and was the Game Boy Micro. Throughout its long history, the Game Boy family managed to sell more than 120 million units combined, making it one of the most successful consoles ever. It generated billions of dollars in revenue for Nintendo, but also put a huge amount of pressure on Gunpei Yokoi to come up with a new good idea and make it fast. The year is 1991 and Nintendo is the market leader both in home consoles with its Super Nintendo and handhelds with the Game Boy. Gunpei Yokoi is ready to embark on his new console project while searching the market for inspiration and ideas. Meanwhile, in the global market there is a new concept called virtual reality that is gaining momentum and recognition both in the gaming and movie industries. There were several technologies being developed worldwide. Most of them featured a VR headset that would help the user immerse in the virtual reality world. They used LCD screens in the visor, headphones and inertial sensors that allowed the system to track and react to the movements of the user's head. The graphics were based on stereoscopic 3D and polygons. One of those systems was the private eye by a company called Reflection Technology. It featured a red monochrome display with a resolution of 720 by 280 pixels but could produce good results for the eye. This particular technology had also been presented to other gaming companies like Sega. Sega had rejected it with the fear of being potentially hazardous for the eyes due to the use of the red monochrome display. Gunpei Yokoi, on the other hand, liked the technology and decided to adopt it for his current console development project. The project was called VR32 coming from virtual reality and 32-bit technology. It was the first time that Yokoi decided to move away from his philosophy on using well-established technology to adopting a cutting-edge solution. The development of the VR32 began immediately and lasted for more than four years with a lot of problems in between. The progress was slow due to the nature of the virtual reality technology and the current hardware limitations. It made the development of a VR-based console a constant struggle. 
While the VR32 project was still active, Nintendo took the strategic decision to shift its focus towards the development of its new and advanced home console, the Nintendo 64. They have stripped Kanpei Yokoi's team from valuable resources and manpower, leaving him with an unfinished product. To make matters worse, the specifications of the VR32 were also lowered. Gunpei Yokoi did not want to put such a console in the market, but Nintendo had such a big amount of money invested in the project that they pushed for a release. In the end, the VR32, now renamed to Virtual Boy, was released in the Japanese market on 1995. It came from the third dimension, with its own brain, its own voice. It's own legs. There's only one problem. It needs your eyes. Virtual Boy. See it now in 3D. For the first time in his long professional career, the latest brainchild of Gunpei Yokoi was not well received neither by critics nor consumers. The reviews for the Virtual Boy were mostly negative both on the hardware and software side. Its high price, as it retailed for $180, which in today's money is more than $300, its low quality red monochrome graphics, its bulky design and even the eye stress it caused were some of the reasons. Its small video game library of only 22 available titles did not help also. The sales were that low that Nintendo decided, after the North American release, not to sell the Virtual Boy to the rest of the PAL markets. The Virtual Boy was discontinued soon after its release. It managed to become the lowest selling Nintendo console in history, totaling 770,000 units sold during its brief lifespan. Gunpei Yokoi had of course his reservations about releasing the system all along, but for Nintendo the blame was on the Virtual Boy's creator. That led to a major conflict between himself and the company. Yokoi knew that it was time for him to move on. In 1996, one year after the Virtual Boy's release, Kanpei Yokoi left Nintendo after 31 years of service. Even after leaving Nintendo, Gunpei Yokoi was not the type of man to remain idle. He had set up his own agency, called Koto Labs, in order to design and develop new technologies and systems as a third-party manufacturer. In 1997, another big Japanese gaming company, Bandai, was trying to find ways to enter the lucrative handheld console market. They saw a major opportunity in the face of Yokoi and approached his company. Yokoi and Bantai came to an agreement and began the initial research and development of the Wonders One. Unfortunately, life had other plans. On the 4th of October of 1997, Ganpei Yokoi was on the passenger seat in the car of one of his colleagues. As they were driving on the Hokuriku Expressway, their car rear-ended a truck. The accident was minor, but as the two men exited the vehicle to inspect the damage, Ganpei Yokoi was hit by two following cars. He was rushed to the hospital where he was pronounced dead two hours later. His death was mentioned in major newspapers worldwide. Bandai continued the development of the Wonder Swan with the support of the remaining staff of Koto Laboratory. They had finally released it to the Japanese market in 1999. One of its launch titles was the puzzle game Ganpei, named after the great inventor. Gunpei Yokoi was one of the key visionaries during the early era of the video game industry. He designed or assisted in designing multiple systems, accessories and software that sold millions worldwide. As a true innovator, he was never afraid of taking risks and trying new out-of-the-box ideas. His impact, both on Nintendo and the gaming world in general, was huge as his philosophy of lateral thinking with Wither technology drives the whole design strategy of the company even today. The Switch, for instance, is another example of how to find creative ways to utilize existing and well-established technology. His contribution is excellently depicted in the title of his biography that was published after his death. There, the title reads, 
Gunpei Yokoi, the father of toys and the man who shaped Nintendo's DNA. That concludes our first episode of Nintendo Legends. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and thumb up as we have more content coming soon.